Welcome to another moment in the Word. Has God been using you? Do you see in your life a miracle that that miracle is continuing and that miracle in your life is also affecting others? Well, that's what we're looking at now as we look at Matthew chapter 14 and beginning at verse 17 and uh, meditating down to verse 21. And it says this, And they say unto him, this is they, meaning the apostles, the disciples of our Lord, and they're saying to him, to Jesus, We have but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them unto me. And he commanded that the multitude sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fishes, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and he broke, and he gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up the fragments that remained, twelve baskets full, and they had eaten about five thousand men besides women and children. And so as we look at this whole context, it is the time of Passover. We know that the pasture that they have left to go to is green. It's uh, that time around March, April, and it is a time in which uh, they have learned of John the Baptist's death. It's a time of what we now know as Passover. John even tells us that it occurs at the time of Passover, and that they have been exhausted, the people are exhausted, it's getting now toward evening, and uh, it because it's Passover, there aren't any stores that are open, and the disciples say, send the multitudes away, the crowds away. We don't have enough. In fact, uh, it was Philip that already had estimated how much they have, and they only had 200 denarii. Not enough, nearly enough, to feed the crowds of 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And Jesus says, don't send them away. You feed them. Wow. Are you kidding? The ministry that you're involved in, the people that you're involved in, the family perhaps, you're looking at your resources and saying, I don't have sufficient, but God is saying, you take care of it. And what Jesus is going to do is that he is going to use his disciples to show his compassion and to demonstrate he can do a miracle through them. And so that's why this particular passage, the feeding of the 5,000, is not just recorded here in Matthew. It's recorded in Mark and Luke and John. All four Gospels record this incident. And it's so important that we don't find any other incident, any other miracle. Even the raising of Lazarus is not recorded in all four Gospels. Something is significant here, and we need to look at it. And so Jesus says, you feed them. And then he said to them when they said, well, you have but uh, five loaves, two fishes. Well, we know from John's gospel, it was Andrew actually who had talked to a lad and that lad had the five loaves and two fishes. Well, Andrew had already been, you see, going through the crowd, but that's always the nature of Andrew. Andrew is the one that's introduced Peter, his brother, to Jesus. Andrew is the one with Philip that also introduced the Greeks to Jesus. And Andrew is the one that finds this little guy, even before the need is presented, that has five loaves and two fishes, and he brings him to Jesus. Now, I want to ask you, are you like Andrew? Are you one that's always introducing people to Jesus? Well, what is five loaves and two fishes? And when you think of the word even that's used here, loaves are like a pita bread. It's, it's, it's a very small cake. And, and, and the fishes, they're, they're a boy's lunch. In fact, it's considered a poor man Galilean lunch. And, and it's not that much. But in Jesus' hands, he takes that which is little, and he makes a lot out of it, doesn't he? He takes the little bit that's in your hands, and he makes a lot out of it, doesn't he? And when you think about Moses, and God says, what's in your hand, Moses? And Moses looks, and he says, a rod, a stick, that's all it is. 
But God used that stick to perform his mighty work. And God is able to take the little bit that's in your hands and use it. And you wonder, why five loaves? Why two fishes? What's the significance of the numbers? Well, it has been pointed out by some other scholars that five is the number of the five books of the Torah. And the two is the two tablets, and that may be, may well may be. What do you have that's five and two? You have five fingers on each hand, don't you? And you have two hands. You have five toes. You have them on each foot. You have two feet. Isn't it interesting that God uses a little bit that's in your life? And Jesus says, bring that to me. And it looks like, what do you mean, bring that to me? That, that seems like, uh, are you kidding? That's not a very uh, good command. But you see, when it doesn't make sense to you, it makes a lot of sense. When God tells you to do something and it doesn't make sense to you, do it anyhow. Because that's where the miracle occurs. The miracle occurs in the obedience to the Lord. What John often points out is that obedience and faith are almost synonyms. That if I obey Christ, I am obeying, trusting him for the results. And so Jesus is given the five loaves and the two fishes. And in verse 19, he then commands all of the people to recline. The word in the Greek means to recline. Klino is actually one of the, the parts of this, this, this command. And, and the word klino, you get your word to recline. And, and re, to recline, remember, it's not like in, in many of the countries of Europe or the United States where when we sit down, we sit independently around a table often. And yet that's not the word that's used here. To recline. They didn't bring pillows. They were reclining on each other. Very, very characteristic of the Middle East. And I want to suggest to you that we lean on each other, don't we? And it's in the fellowship of the believers that we find our strength as we trust in the Lord together. You see, we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves, are we? We're to exhort one another, and so much the more as we see the day of Christ approaching. So he says, recline, command them to lie down, and, and that they are reclining then, laying on each other as, remember, families, that this is Passover, and it's the father that is the head of the home, and he's got his entire family. So may have been in the group of 50, there may have been then maybe four or five families. And as they're reclining down, it also reminds us of David's great hymn, Psalm 23. He leads me beside the still waters. He brings me to green pastures. He makes me to recline in green pastures. Isn't that great? Because the good shepherd is the one that provides for us. And how does he do that? Remember what Jesus said to his disciples? You feed them. So now let's see what happens. Jesus, in verse 19, he took the five loaves. Notice that's in the aorist tense. It's a point of time. He took them. And then the next is, he, after taking the five loaves, he looks up to heaven. When we oftentimes, especially in Europe and the United States, pray, we pray with our eyes closed. But that's not necessarily a, a requirement in Scripture. In fact, it, we find people oftentimes, and Jewish people particularly, looking up to heaven because that's where God is. And so the looking up is really Jesus looking to the Father. And you can picture now everybody, as they're lying down, they are all able to see Jesus. And they see him as he has taken these five loaves, two fishes. Not much in our human thinking, but in God's hands, in Jesus' hands, it's everything. And he's going to make a lot out of it. But it begins with prayer. And it begins with him looking to heaven, and then he blesses it. The word for blessed is eulogio, and, and it's we get our English word uh, eulogy from, but it's also in another translation, or excuse me, in another gospel, it's the word Eucharist. 
So it could be translated either way. It's either a good word or it's good grace, a good gift, because both are true. And when you take the Eucharist, it is the Lord's table. It is the very thing that we see here. He took and then he blessed. He gave thanks for it. And then notice the next word, he broke it. He broke it. And isn't that what we do at the Lord's table? Is that he takes the bread and he says, this is my body which is broken for you. He blesses it. He breaks it. And then he gave it to his disciples. All four of those verbs are used six times in the New Testament, always in the context of the Eucharist or the Lord's table. And so as we look at this passage, we see now, as you may be taking of the Lord's table, you may think, "That's what is that? It's not very much. But I guarantee you in the hands of Jesus, when you do what Jesus has commanded, it fills you up. And when does the miracle occur? Well, that's really interesting because he gives it to his disciples and they gave it to the multitude. Now, are the disciples going back and forth between the 20,000 or 30,000 people that now are broken down in 50s and they're going up and down the side of this mountain and this pasture to Jesus? No, remember the verb is in the eras, tense a point in time. No, the miracle is happening as they now have taken the fragment that Jesus has given to them and they pass it on and then they pass it on and they pass it on. That applies to you, doesn't it? This isn't just simply an event that happened 2,000 years ago and we say that was a wonderful event. It is an event that is occurring today as you take what you have that God has given to you and you recognize it has come from God and you bless God. You're not blessing the bread. You're blessing the God who has given the bread. And as a result, the miracle happens as it's being passed on to the next person and the next person. Your life's been changed because you've received the bread of life. And the one that now you share that bread with, they then also are changed as they receive the bread of life. And then it's passed on to others. And we see this great event occurring here. And then verse 20, and all that did eat were filled. Oh, there's a satisfaction. That little boy that brought the five loaves, two fishes, he may have thought, well, that's maybe going to, if it's a little guy, he probably eats a whole lot. And he may think, well, that would be maybe enough. But no, he leaves with abundance. He is completely satisfied. And then we find that there is so much that there are 12 baskets. And the baskets, by the way, they are, are like made out of hemp and they could be like a rope basket and the fragments and they're crumbs. They're, they're actually broken pieces of the, of the, of the, of the pita and, and thereby it is enough for the 12 apostles. And isn't that great? Because after they have served others, now they serve each other. Oh, but where's the basket for Jesus? Oh, isn't that how we bless him? They shared with him the blessing of the miracle. And isn't that how it happens? That you have been received and blessed by what God has given to you, but God is blessed by how you've used it. And your praise to him, you offer up the praise of thanksgiving and joy. And then it's Matthew that records, and only Matthew does, the number 5,000. 5,000 men. Remember, this is Passover. The father, the head of the family, is the one who is orchestrating the Seder as they gather together. And so it's not mentioning women and children. Typically, it was families. And even today, if you ask a rabbi how many are in his congregation, he will not say, oh, there's 1,500 people. No, he'll say there's 400 families, 400 men. And thereby we know the number. My dear one, you count. What's in your hand? The miracle occurs when you give what you have. You may not think it's much, but in God's hands, it's everything. You will bless. What Jesus told these disciples, you feed the people.
and they did. Now that's your turn. I pray you're feeding the people. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Father, that you have changed us. And by changing us, you've enabled us to be your arms and your feet, to be the ones, Father, now distributing your grace to others and being able, Father, to see our lives transformed and at the same time the transformation of others. Oh, Father, we pray that each of us, as we meditate on this passage, that we continue the account, the miracle that happened here, that we, Father, have taken the little, obeyed you, and seen the much. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.